It's time for Windows Weekly. We're less than a week away from the release of uh, Windows 8, the consumer preview. Paul and Mary Jo have more information about that. Office uh, 15 as well. It's all coming up next with Windows Weekly. Stay here. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 249, recorded February 23rd, 2012. Shopping for Puppies. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Ford, featuring the EcoBoost engine with turbocharger and direct injection. Look for EcoBoost on the 2012 Explorer and Edge, the 2013 Escape, and at Ford.com slash technology. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly. And here they are, Paul Therott on the left, Mary Jo Foley on the right, our commentators ready to announce the big bout. Windows versus the rest of the world. Is this, I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is this monitor set up different than it was before? Yeah. It's, okay. uh, why, you don't like it? No, it, it just looks different. In what way? I don't, I don't know. I'd almost have to go look at a picture of the... Uh... Look at that. It's a different monitor. That's the problem. It's just a monitor. It, did the other one have a stand like that? No, the stands. This the other one kind of hit it. The other one will be back. This is a, this is a television. A, one of the Samsung um, smart app TVs we saw at CES, and there we're reviewing it for before you buy our product. Yeah, I fear. Show. I fear a change. I, I you should fear change. There's no <laughs> bezel holding you in. You could just oh, there it is. fall right out. See, oh, that? maybe that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. You're so you're bigger, brighter, shinier. <laughs> <laughs> we've had this we've had this discussion <laughs> you're right there now right there uh, so yeah this is an interesting uh a television i should probably as i always do cover up the logo with my <laughs> my brick but um no i, I we're reviewing it, it nice. thursday it actually that's today isn't it we're reviewing it today on the before you buy uh, because this is the uh, new app samsung app platform yes which, which is kind of cool actually I could... is it uh android based uh, I believe it's Linux, but I'm not sure. That's a very good question. I don't know if they've even even it said. Be. Yeah. Be. See, watch. I can make a smart hub appear on, on top of you guys. Well, maybe that's... Maybe I covered it up. <laughs> there, that would be bad. Here comes the smart hub. Stand back. See, it's starting. Downloading. It's, it's snappy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I guess we have to update our Installing hub. Installing updates. Please <laughs> it's, reboot. It's updating the hub. Well, that's just dumb. And now I'm stuck. Mary Jo's going to have a downloading thought bubble. Downloading, installing. I don't know what the hell that was all about. <laughs> wow. Wow. So how was uh, beautiful Barcelona? It was nice. On your I, way back, did you notice a lot of Microsoft people going the other direction? <laughs> no. <laughs> I saw Windows phones in Barcelona, and I saw, uh, or I rather heard, at more, let's see, twi maybe just twice, maybe three times, but at least twice in in like Papa's bars, people talking about Microsoft. <laughs> wow. It was very wow, strange. Really? <laughs> in Papa's bar. I have some paella and Windows 8, please. Wow, yeah. that is strange. That's very odd. And, and I also discovered, we, we, you know, there's a language barrier, obviously. Right. So a, a taxi driver was taking us to a restaurant and he was trying to talk to me about my, I thought about my smartphone. I didn't understand what he was saying. And he said a word that sort of seemed like it might mean on fire or incendiary or something. And then he said, uh, he said something like, not just for Spain, but for, you know, Delamond or whatever. I said, yeah, of the world, yes. And he says, yes, of the world. And he says, you know? And I said, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I, know. I didn't know what he meant. He should say, and then I, I got out of the car and I said, he meant Mobile World Congress. Oh. He, he, he was trying to tell me. He was aware of it. We were just driving by that square where the, all the stuff is. And he, I think he was trying to tell me that this place was going to be the center of right. smartphones or whatever for the whole world next right, week. Next week. I just didn't understand the language, so random, it's, you know. It's kind not of, it's Spanish; just, it's Catalan. Was he speaking Catalan? Yeah, they speak. They speak both. It's kind of a mix uh, of mush. both. Yeah. yeah, beautiful city. One of my favorite cities. I saw you went to the Park Guell. How did the kids like the Park Guell? <laughs> I mean, you know, they're kids, right? So my my daughter, you know, confronted by the beauty of Barcelona, it, of course, points out, "Look, there's a parrot." 
<laughs> you know, I mean, like she, she just doesn't. <laughs> Parrot, you know what I mean? They're Squirrel. kids. I mean, so uh, yeah. Oh no! Now we're in trouble. You have been replaced by smart apps. Look at that. I don't know why I had to download. I presume that that doesn't happen all the time. No, it's probably a software update. Yeah. Of some kind. yeah well, we had been using what, it because when you turn on your TV, what you want to do is wait. Yeah. Well, but we had been using it, so I guess it does that. So there's Hulu Plus, there's Netflix, HBO Go, which they just announced, uh, is on here. Good. Um, social TV. That sounds scary. I don't know what that is. So people can watch you while you're watching TV. Should I? Should I have? Tw <laughs> should I have Twitter floating over you? That would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> Those live it's things never go well. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But I could do that, which would be kind of cool. Connecting. I don't know. Now I have to enter my credentials. This is a bit, this was a terrible idea. Updating. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I I I don't know why anyone doubts that computers are going to take over the world. <laughs> they, they shouldn't take over TV. That's for sure. I think right there you see it in a nutshell. Yep. Uh, okay, honey. I just want to watch Oprah. No, no. Sorry, you have to enter your Samsung account first. No, we're, we're updating. Oh my God! How do I get out of this here? Exit. There is a button that says exit, and it worked. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your tour of smart television. I think it, you know. I mean, this is an internet connected TV. It's got Wi-Fi. Um, Netflix is built in. We'll we'll be part of it. We're going to have a Samsung app. So I think you know that's kind of nice. You'll be able to watch. You'll be able to. You know, that's what I should do. I should tune in the Windows Weekly channel, and then I could watch us watching us watching us watch us. <laughs> Watch right. us. <laughs> kind of a weird, a weird new meta show that we're, we're very doing. meta. We could watch last week's show and comment on it. That'd be interesting. <laughs> oh, wow. wow, we could we could riff on it like we did with the CES keynote. Right there, you go. Exactly. So it uh, it is February 29th, a week from yesterday, Wednesday, that uh, Microsoft will release Windows 8. Cons what is it? Consumer preview? Is that what they're calling Consuelo it? Consuelo preview. Consuelo preview. <laughs> <laughs> Jace. The Conquistador preview. Jace. Um, and uh, do we have any more information about uh, this excitement? Okay, there you not, go. Not a whole <laughs> lot to more. Say, but <laughs> to uh, one, one new little tidbit we, we basically had confirmed today was there is also going to be a refresh of the server bits. Um, yep. So... We think that's also on February 29th and probably going to be called a beta, I would guess. And because who would call a server update a consumer preview? Although, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so that's good. And will they, but they, they're not going to, will they release it kind of at the same time? Like, here is Windows 8 consumer and here is Windows 8 server, like at the same, or is it just kind of going to slipstream out the door? I'm, yeah, I think I'm betting. Know. You do you think? Do you think, Paul? Though they'll say in Barcelona, like talk about server because oh, I'm by thinking the way. it's going to talk. No, about no, 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 no. But I, I, but I think the releases will kind of happen at the same time. Right. It's similar yeah. to the Visual Studio stuff, right? Um, SkyDrive Wave Five, which you know that's pretty hip. That sounds like a Lil Wayne. <laughs> SkyDrive Wave Five. <laughs> we'll be uh, we'll be. Uh, I'll pretend out. I understand what that reference means. I know but it means nothing. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, there's been a lot of speculation about the Windows Live stuff um, and whether Windows Live Essentials continues. And actually, there's some good reasons to speculate on that because um, in the coming consumer preview, of course, we're going to see Metro versions of the apps that used to be part of Windows Live Essentials. And um, I think it's fair to say that those apps will be delivered in a manner similar to Windows Live Essentials, but I, I, you know, they never really followed through on the Windows Live Essentials dream, if you will. I think we talked about that last week. <laughs> I have and been to the mountaintop. I have seen the essentials. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think what we're going to see going forward is a slightly different scheme where maybe these things are basically delivered through the store and, of course, on new PCs and that perhaps they'll be updated on a more frequent basis. Certainly that was always the hope. Um, but, you know, I think Windows Live Essentials kind of goes away, but that's, of course, not related to SkyDrive necessarily. Right. So, um yeah, so there was a huge announcement about SkyDrive over the weekend, or I guess on Monday, um, which is actually pretty huge. And when, when you combine it with some rumors, which are very credible, about you know paid storage tiers uh, for SkyDrive finally, um, uh, native apps for Windows and for the Mac, 
and some other rumors. And with the previous announcements that Microsoft made about uh, Windows 8 and SkyDrive integration, you're starting to see this thing, which frankly is not used by that many people. I don't know if Mary Jo recalls, but they, they actually, in that blog post, provided a number for the for the... I don't know if it's 14 million people or something. It was a fairly small yeah, number. 17 million. Yeah, it's not big. It's definitely not that a That are number. using SkyDrive, right? Yeah, because, and I right. think the reason for that is that today SkyDrive is fairly hard to use. It's basically this web interface. It works okay with Office documents. They have a picture interface uh, as well. And then you can share uh, with other people that way and have, um, you know, like photo slideshows and so forth. And, and there, there are kind of like secret features of SkyDrive that are pretty useful, like the ability to send ginormous attachments via email but have them actually stored on SkyDrive so they don't actually go out over email because a lot of email systems wouldn't accept these ginormous uh, file sizes. Um, so, you, But it, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much going on there. And then, of course, they have this live mesh thing, which is like a, a sync service that primarily from PC to PC, but also uh, PC to PC to cloud, uh, which is sort of part of SkyDrive but is actually uh, separate from a storage allotment standpoint. Um, so today's SkyDrive is not all that exciting, but when you look at all the new stuff they're doing and you combine it all together, I mean, everything they're, they're doing, uh, very suddenly it becomes really exciting and very interesting. Yeah, the fetch, there was a fetch remote files thing um, that they say is going to be part of it, too, that a lot of people were kind of excited about because they said, you know, oh, this would be cool. This is kind of – and it got me asking um, – I forgot Paul was on vacation. I was like, Paul, so is this, do you think this is going to replace Windows Home <laughs> Server? And you heard crickets. Crickets. <laughs> I'm on the I beach. No, you answered me. Hi, you this did is Paul Thorat. I'm on the beach right now. <laughs> yeah. He actually. Uh, your answered, call is important was... to me, Mary Jo. <laughs> no, actually, the day, well, the day, the day that that happened, I, I was actually back in the apartment or the uh, hotel working anyway. So it was. It was. Uh, of course, it's fine. Yeah. But yeah, the fetch. What, what the does fetch that mean? Show. What is what does remote fetch mean? What is that? How does that? I. Th I th I think it means if you have files you've left on your PC and you're at work and you want to get them, you can yeah. get them. Is there them. a string attached to it or how would I get it? How do I? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, actually, so this, it's funny. It, when, I, when I think about this, it, it, what it's going to replace for me in many ways is the, the file copy part of Hamachi, right? Log me in Hamachi or, you know, the log me in pro service um, where – you're basically hitting your computer remotely as if it were an FTP server and transferring files back and forth. So when I go on a trip, I use both of those services um, to get to files that I have on my home server, for example. But uh, the way that this would work is you have a, a home PC that's going to be on all the time, obviously. That would be the point. And you're away from home for some reason. You're at work, you're on a trip, whatever it is. And you want to access a file somewhere that's on that computer. So you can lo you log into SkyDrive. And one of the entries over on the side, you know, today there are things like documents, pictures, whatever. They'll be connected devices, and one of them will be that computer. And you can browse the file, sh the well, not file shares, but rather the file system in the web interface on SkyDrive and then drag and drop across. So you can, you can copy files to that machine while you're on the road, which is very useful. Or you can get files back uh, from that machine. And so, you know, and, and it's interesting. I mean, SkyDrive of the future... Looks like it's going to replay. Obviously, it's going to have the SkyDrive stuff. It's it's going to handle far more document types uh, elegantly. There's going to be we know from the Windows Phone Eight stuff that there's going to be the ability to put your music collection up there and then stream it to your phone. So it's going to handle all these new file types, not just Office documents, not just um, you know photos and pictures, but also these other document types. So there's going to be all that seamless integration stuff. And then it's it's also going to do the, the PC to PC sync because you're going to sync all your Windows Eight settings, all your uh, customizations, all your app states and so forth. You'll be able to run an app kind of suspended on one computer then run it again on a different computer and pick up right where you left off. That's all very interesting. And now you're going to have this kind of, uh, it's not a VPN capability, but uh, it's it's sort of like a remote FTP capability. This way, I would, it was a slightly nicer interface, but an ability to browse the file system remotely from a web browser uh, and, you know, download files from a remote computer. It's it, it's. It, you know, again, in the theme of it used to be kind of lame and, and simplistic and limited, and now it's going to be really exciting and full-featured, you know, coming soon. They, they also said, I thought this was interesting, um, initially it's going to be a something for Windows 8, um, but then they're also going to add the fetch and the desktop sync for Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. Um, so 
it's not just like you have to only have Windows 8 PCs, obviously. You can have other kinds of PCs, too. They didn't actually call out the phones stuff. No, though, they didn't. I'm, I'm, I'm hearkening back to the, the Windows yeah. 8, the Windows Phone 8 stuff that we talked about yeah. previously. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking, but, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe next week there'll be more of a discussion around some of that stuff. They also noted that there's more to come. I mean, there, there were rumors right before this happened. Uh, well, rumors that people had screenshots of it. They're, they're clearly real that Microsoft is adding uh, paid storage tiers like any other cloud service, right? So you can buy, you know, 25, 50, 100 gigabytes of storage per year, which is something I've always wanted. I mean, th the reason I've looked into third-party solutions for cloud storage is because Microsoft never really had anything pervasive. You know, Google has cloud storage that you can pay for in tiers, but it's, it's very much tied to certain things. You know, it's not very easy to get to uh, as a sort of a general purpose file share kind of a thing. Um, Microsoft's never had it, but now they're going to. Um, and then other capabilities, you know, that supposedly are coming, like those clients, uh, also for the Mac, which Microsoft didn't discuss in that blog uh, post either. So they're really, you know, it's, it, again, you know, they're taking something that's just limited usefulness and limited use, I would say. And now it's going to be like the backbone of, I think, what a lot of Windows users do. It's It's very, very interesting. And you could sort of conject that, they'll be adding these capabilities to the Xbox as well. Why wouldn't they? Right. So in the same way that now through, from an Xbox, you can browse the, the file shares of PCs and home servers on your home network. You know, why not have SkyDrive be one of those locations? And if that's where your music is, if that's where your videos are, uh, whatever, you'll be able to get to it from the Xbox as well. That's neat. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And good news. I mean, I, I, oh, I, go ahead. I, sorry, I was going to say a couple of my readers were like, wow, I'm actually more excited about this than I am about <laughs> Windows 8. Uh, they did because yeah, well, they were yeah, like, "Wow, yeah. this is this is actually like stuff that's going to make my life really a hundred percent better." Uh, it, it's, it, it's a it's a real win win because it, it absolutely is better with Windows eight, right? Because you get the uh, the the Metro style app synchronization, the setting synchronization, all that stuff. But it, it's instantly better on any version of Windows, and I, apparently on the Mac. I guess we'll see how far they take it on the Mac. But it's just very interesting. I mean, they're. they're you know, they they have like the SkyDrive app that they kind of given out in some mobile platforms. And it's like, well, yeah, but what do I do with this? I mean, it's, it's kind of a strange thing, but now you can kind of see where they're taking it. And um, that's exciting. It is exciting. I think it, it's neat because you don't have to have Windows 8 to benefit from it. You know, it just points up that uh, you, you, we make a big deal and Microsoft makes a big deal out of a new operating system. But really, people, humans care about features they care about what they can do right they i thought care. you were going to say that humans care about infrastructure humans care more about <laughs> middleware than anything it's, uh, i'm really looking for the back end services uh... you know <laughs> but seriously in fact i think that's you know yeah. that yeah, yeah. and that's the the challenge i think with cloud-based services is uh, they're fiddly, and you ha and, and and you have to explain it to people. And there's some nervousness, understandable nervousness about it. But once they get what you can do with it, it's like, wow, this is great. That's where Dropbox, yeah, and, I think, has has been such a success. Yeah, I mean, the only problem with Dropbox, of course, is that it's like this thing you have to know about and then go get and right. kind of configure it. And, you oh know, yeah, only the you, geeks know, use it, but yeah, no, it, it works well for what it does. Of course, I mean, it's it's very useful. It's the one you um, got to beat, I think. I may be wrong, yeah. but I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. They specifically mentioned Dropbox. Yeah. Um, and you this know, is, you know, so many people wanted them to put live mesh in SkyDrive. I mean, how how long have people been asking right, for that? Right, you know? and so they, they didn't say it. this, but if you really kind of parse that post, it seems like this future version of SkyDrive basically takes over that sync functionality from uh, live mesh. And live mesh has a remote desktop feature that allows you to kind of have your remote PC up in a window as you would in a remote desktop connection window. Uh, slightly less nice looking because it's going out over the internet and so forth. But I, I think what is more useful to most people than that is the ability to get to those files, right? I mean, it's nice. It's I guess it's nice to be able to run your remote desktop. Most people don't need to run an application on their home PC for some reason. I suppose some do. But, you know, most often in my case, certainly when I'm on the road, you know, you open your laptop, you're like, oh, damn, I forgot that thing that was on my desktop at home. And, you know, in the past, I would call my wife and say, hey, could you email me this from my desktop? You know, like a jerk or whatever. And then, you know, eventually you get these remote access uh, kind of solutions and so forth. So, th but this, just by being integrated in Windows is a huge deal. And if you use, uh, say, SkyDrive and Windows Phone 7.5, for example, it just, when you see how it plugs right into the Office Hub uh, automatically, just by virtue of you logging on with your ID, 
you know, that's how it's going to work in Windows 8 as well. It's, it's, it's that seamless access, I think, that makes it truly useful. You know, to normal to consumers and normal people. Yeah, and that's why it's tough to beat uh, Dropbox out of the box because Dropbox is so supported across the board on mobile and everything by lots of apps. They have an API, but I mean, if anybody can do it, it's gonna it's gonna be Microsoft. Uh, you just have to get the, the apps to start using. And I'm sure. And what is it like on on, uh, on Windows Mobile? Is it, if Windows Phone is are, is it kind of built into Windows Phone in the sense that apps will just use it? As a storage medium? No, uh, no not exactly. I mean, uh, right in 7.5, they have a uh, integration in the Office Hub so you can access your Office documents right from Office Web Apps and then load them into the uh, the mobile Office apps and edit them or view them or whatever. Um, they also have a SkyDrive app that they just released for Windows Phone and also for iOS, I believe, uh, that basically is a way to access any file that you, you have up in SkyDrive. And then depending on the file type, it will act accordingly. So, for example, if you have a PDF file and you tap on that from the SkyDrive app, it will load Adobe Reader. You right. know? So right. it's a way to extend the functionality of SkyDrive beyond just those core office document types. Um, and I think is, that's the, the, the way forward. Is the primary focus enterprise for this? For SkyDrive? Yeah. I mean, is, uh, no. no. No, no. This is it's no, consumer no, it's, facing. It's consumers, yeah. 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 So they have yeah. Azure or whatever it is they use in the enterprise is going to be... You know, without knowing what they're going to say next week about Windows Server 8, for example, right. one might speculate that uh, businesses could certainly use stuff like this, right. I mean, they, you know, this kind of access as well. And it wouldn't surprise me to discover that uh, Windows Server 8 as a platform or perhaps SharePoint as a platform could be used to... SharePoint, of uh, course, is huge, yeah. Yeah, yeah provide similar functionality in uh, managed businesses. And, of course, the rumors are flying that, that Google's about to launch something called G Drive or Drive or something similar. Yep. So it's going to get... Yeah. It's a crowded field getting cr more crowded all the time. Yeah, I mean, on the Google side, because I've tried to use this, I, I pay for additional Google storage. I use it primarily for photo storage. But once you get past photos, which is kind it's of like much. there... It's, it's docs Yeah, there's photos. not much there. Right. People it's don't photos. know. You can't upload any arbitrary file to Google Docs. But it's kind right. of it's so, a weird... You know, I mean... Yeah, you need a third-party tool to make this appear right. as a normal bit of storage. You know, that you kind of thing. In. So, right, yeah. Um, yeah, Amazon has a similar thing around music. You know, Microsoft has this web interface, I would say that has been, like I said earlier, is, is geared primarily toward Office Docs and, and pictures only. But it's only been 25 gigs of storage. So um, for Office Docs, that's more than enough. But if you want to put your photo collection up there, I mean, you could eat that up pretty quick. And then my music collection, for example, which would, would be pointless to put in SkyDrive today, but if I wanted to, is bigger than the 25 gigs they're offering. So it doesn't make any sense for that either yet. Right. What? Uh, but here's some good news. Uh, I see that uh, Windows 8 is going to support. Uh, they've just added support for English, so um, <laughs> yeah. that's 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 a huge huge story. I think. No, I'm being silly. U UK English, which is yes. apparently. Well, I, think, I think it's important that we have treated these people like the second class citizens that they are. For so long. <laughs> but hey, we fought a revolution, baby, so that we right. don't have to include UK English in the uh, no none of this schedule and uh, schedule and honour. Aluminium. Aluminium. My, what my the? Favorite. Yeah, I know. I love that, actually. <laughs> I want to drive, I'm going to drive people crazy and say aluminium from now on. Uh, and uh, any any predictions about, you know, a lot, it's not weird because Mobile World Congress is a cell phone, you know, a mobile phone Congress yeah. uh, that Microsoft has chosen uh, to uh, put out this consumer preview of Windows 8 at. But I well, imagine okay, so there will be some Windows phone conversation like Nokia about, and... Yeah, well, I, Mary Jo probably has more to say about that. I just wanted to say, just right up front, it's interesting that Stephen Sanofsky and other people from the Windows team were going to be there anyway, right? So they're having this Windows right. 8 event, but it's on the side. It's not part of Mobile World Congress. It's it's happening there because well, but they're it's kind there. of stealing its thunder, if you ask me. I mean, it's the big announcement. Maybe yeah, not. but I, don't know. We'll I have to say, well, but I, I, an announcement of this type is really just a, it's sort of a PR announcement. It almost right. doesn't matter where it happens. There's no new right? information. Or most people. Well, no, there could be. I'm just saying most people are going to hear about it virtually, right, right. online. Or right. So w where they are physically standing when they make an announcement almost doesn't matter. Right. Right. I, I think the real question here is, why are those guys in Barcelona? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> they're already there. So why were they already going to be there? Mm. You know, because it is a mobile show. I know there's a mobile theory. component to Windows 8, but mm. it makes me think that they were... You, you don't send Steven Sanofsky halfway around the globe just for the heck of it. Clearly, 
there's some other thing occurring that he needs to be there for some reason. So what might that be? Yeah, I'm really like I'm still on the fence how much they're going to say next week about um, Windows Phone 8. You know, like we, we, we've talked about this on other episodes, like they, they've kind of the cat's kind of already out of the bag as far as, you know, some of the new features. Well, actually, most of the new features, I think. And um, Paul, Paul wrote an article where he basically listed all the new features. So um, there's not a whole lot more to say there. Uh, but, you know, they they are in kind of a hard place, like we've talked about before, because if they do go out and start talking all about Windows Phone 8 now, um, they're going to come back to the U.S. and launch these Nokia devices that are running Windows Phone 7.5. So, you know, I think they have to really strike a balance here. If they say much about it, I think they need to keep it at a super high level and just talk like they've been talking all along about how the idea is to have more shared code across all of their platforms, more shared services. Um, I don't think it's going to be like they stand up on stage sometime before the Windows Consumer Preview and say, guess what? Here's Windows Phone 8. Here's Apollo, everyone. Uh, because yep. if they do, they're going to kill their market. They're going to completely kill it. Hmm. I don't know. So, um, you know, we, the parts we do know about Mobile World Congress is Nokia is having a big press event on Monday. Um, there's rumors they're going to announce new Windows phones and also new, uh, I think, Asha phones, too. Um, maybe uh, new even what? a new... New what phones? Uh, Asha is that uh, brand. It used to be called... The S40. feature phone brand? Symbian. Yeah. Is it uh, well, I think it's. Uh, I don't think it's. It's not. What's it's a uh, system. Symbian system forty. System forty. Symbian was system up to system sixty. So I'm maybe it's was a. Okay. It's a basic version of Symbian, perhaps. Asha. Yeah, okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. So they yeah, announced those. Their, their some feature. of those. Had, right. Nokia World uh, last fall. They had some new Asha phones. It's it's their new con, uh, feature phone brand, basically. So they're going to have some of those, but I think also a couple, at least a couple new Windows phones. Um, there were also some leaks today saying that ZTE, the Chinese Windows phone maker, is going to have a bunch of phones um, to announce at World Congress. So I, I think there could be a lot of new Windows phone devices announced there. But as far as how much Microsoft's going to say about the actual platform, I'm not that optimistic. I, I don't think they're going to say a lot. Um, they're not even giving one of the keynotes, I don't think. Uh, Microsoft at Mobile World Congress. I don't hmm. think they're even on the docket for that. Hmm. So, um, hmm. yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we know that there, there's nothing being streamed from the consumer preview. Uh, so anybody who wanted to watch that live, they're not going to be streaming it. We are, we're going to be relying on people who are there doing live blogs. Uh, and I don't think they're streaming any kind of phone announcement from um, the show either. As far as I know. You know, it's interesting. I'm just looking at these Asha phones. These, in many ways, the specs are somewhat similar to the first Windows phones, gigahertz processors. and mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. These are They're actually pretty phones. nice yeah. looking. I mean, I've not yeah. seen yeah, one. Uh, 320 by 240, 2.6 inch screen, um, memory up to 32 gigs with an SD card. I mean, these for feature phones, yeah. these are powerful phones. Yeah. yeah. I got to hold some of them at uh, Nokia World. They're, they're really nice phones. And they, they come in a lot of different camera. colors. Yeah. yeah, they're Face nice. Face detection, wow. Uh, yeah, I think I, I think from the Microsoft side, it's a given that they're going to announce Tango and, and what that is. Uh, there'll be some Tango. Tango devices. <laughs> Tango, but not Apollo. That's what... No. Right. Yeah. I, right, but I mean, in other words, that will happen. The question is whether they address Windows Phone 8 at all. I mean, I, I think even... I think something high level would be useful to say and might explain why Steven Sanofsky is there. Something along the line of, you know, the grand unification... Is occurring this year, oh, and <laughs> this is dun 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 dun. You know, <laughs> you know um, he might, but isn't it the case that he also they might have planned this consumer preview rollout all along, and they thought, well, let's fly Stephen out for that. I mean, it, it, it could be that they just knew this was going to happen. Could be, but I don't, I don't think so. You think he was there anyway? Yeah. Hmm. You guys are. You guys. Are, I mean, I mean they have to be there to rehearse. Theorists. I know they have to be there to rehearse, right? And to get everything set up for the big CP launch, even though it's only like an hour and a half event, they have to do a lot of prep. For yeah, that, yeah, but I, I, I thought that Paul's point was they did the CP launch because Sanofsky was there for other reasons. Oh, oh, oh. So the presumption my, being that I'm he's there to kind of, yeah. even though it's a mobile conference, because Windows 8 is mobile, baby. Well, I mean, I, uh, before I knew uh, how this was going to shake out, you know, I got the invite for this event and I looked into traveling back to Barcelona 
if oh, I had, you know, God. if I had to, I would have. Yeah. And um, it's expensive, <laughs> you know. Yep. It's uh, it's not easy to do that at the last minute. No. Um, well, it's, so, you know, we'll watch. As you say, it's the internet nowadays, and we can watch from here, and we don't need to be there. And yep. um, the bits will be available globally, worldwide. Yes. Yes. So there. <laughs> Let's take a break yes. so yes, we can all will. ponder what I've just said. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, yesterday we had uh, we had Steve Martin on uh, triangulation. And mm-hmm. I started the Ford ad. <laughs> and he said, oh, Ford, wow. <laughs> like... Oh, I, and I thought this was just like your hobby thing that you do, Leo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were in a basement. <laughs> uh, wow. So I'm going to put that on a real incentive to Ford. Yes, Ford. Wow. Uh, we he unfortunately isn't driving a Ford, but I'm working on him. We're gonna get we're gonna get him in a Ford. Um, this uh, this portion of Windows Weekly brought to you by the EcoBoost engine. If you, I'm going to take you to Ford.com/technology right now. This is a great site to see what Ford is up to with their technology. It's interesting. They have a page dedicated to technology. It just shows you that. And, you know, Ford was at the Consumer Electronics Show. I mean, in this day and age, uh, a 21st century car company is all about technology. We're in the post-industrial era. You still got to build the thing. But then you load it with things like Sync and my Ford Touch and all the cool technologies. And, of course, you've got to have an engine. And they've got the electric, the hybrid electric, the plug-in electric. And... For petrol, as uh, Mr. Alan Mulally, their CEO, says, he always says petrol, which is apparently how they call it in every other nation but the U.S., you've got the EcoBoost engine. And this is sweet. I drove one a couple of years ago when I was shopping for my uh, Mustang. I drove the SHO, and wow, was I blown away. Now they've put two-liter EcoBoost engines in two of their large utility vehicles, the 2012 Explorer and the Edge. And I got to tell you, amazing. It gives the uh, seven-passenger Ford Explorer best-in-class highway fuel economy. And they did it in two ways. First of all, they redesigned the conventional en- engine to meet fuel efficiency standards but give you the power you want. There, that's the dual. Let me show that again there. That, that there is the, uh, is, the, is the direct injection. See that? And uh, DI, or direct injection, puts a cooler, denser charge in the piston, generating more power per drop of fuel. And then they've got these turbocharged. Now, I know sometimes when people, I say turbo, people go, oh, yeah, I had a turbocharged uh, engine and there was some, some lag there. No, they've done something very smart. They, they've got dual smaller turbines. These are spun up from the engine's exhaust, so that converts energy from the exhaust that would otherwise be lost into those turbine wheels right there. Each is coupled to a compressor, compressor and what it's doing is press, pressurizing the... Uh, the air that's going into the piston, which gives you much significant increase in power per liter or gallon. Liter or so of petrol or gallons of gas. And, and what's great is you get low-end uh, responsiveness, torque, low-end torque responsiveness with uh, virtually no turbo lag. But I'm, ju- I'm just talking about one of many technologies Ford's putting into their new vehicles. You've got to t- check out the, 20, the uh, 2.0 liter i4 EcoBoost engine in the 2012 Edge Explorer. And then uh, next year, they're going to have a 1.6 or 2.0 li- liter option in the 2013. Actually, it's not next year. It's a 2013 Escape, but it comes out to, in the spring. And the SHO has that three and a half liter uh, V6 EcoBoost, which is I mean, 365 horsepower. 300... Dvorak told me this once that the kind of the holy grail of engines is to have as you know an equivalent number of horsepower to the number of cc's in an engine. So a 350 cc engine with 365 horsepower that gives you some idea and 350 foot pound torque, unbelievable, and great efficiency on the uh, on the uh, Explorer and Edge. The 2.0 liter EcoBoost has 28 highway miles per gallon, according to the uh, EPA, with their front wheel drive. That's best in class in the large utility vehicles. I want you to try them out. Go to a Ford dealer near you and just say, I want to try the EcoBoost engine. I just want to see what it's like to get great gas mileage and great performance. Uh, I have a feeling you'll be going home with a Ford. It's like puppies. Don't ever ever go shopping for puppies unless you're ready to take one home. Just the same. Ford.com slash technology if you want to learn more. Leo Laporte. 
with Paul Farratt of the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com, Mary Jo Foley of ZDNet, all about Microsoft.com, talking all about, yes, Microsoft on Windows Weekly. It's like puppies. It's like puppies. You don't go shopping <laughs> for puppies. I learned this, by the way, by shopping for puppies. It is impossible to shop for puppies and not take one home, right? Don't do it. You will have a dog. <laughs> Same thing with kitties. Visual Studio 11. <laughs> not quite the same. You could shop for Visual Studio 11, and you might go home without it. Well, and then again, you might not. The, uh, the uh, beta yeah. is out. Uh, same. T this is weird. Same time as the other beta. Yep. Yeah, yeah we first, just found the... out about this today. Wow. Like right before breaking the show. Breaking news. i got to get a breaking, breaking news, news sounder for this show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up, you people. Breaking news. <laughs> now, <laughs> Mary Jo Foley. <laughs> yeah, so how they did this was pretty different and interesting. They, they invited a handful of press today to an online webcast, and they told us about it coming out next week. And they showed us a, a quick sneak peek of uh, the Visual Studio, what they call Visual Studio 11, even though it's really probably going to call be called Visual Studio 2012. Uh -huh. Visual Studio 11 is the code name mm -hmm. for this. Um, they showed us, uh, you know, what the UI is going to look like, and they ran us through some of the scenarios of things that you can do with it. Um, so, yeah, that, that was exciting, like just right before the show. Um, and and um, my, my biggest takeaway, I'll, I'll be curious what Paul's is, but um, being a, not being a programmer um, and watching all this, my biggest takeaway was they couldn't really talk about Windows 8 today at all. Um, <laughs> so, sure. you know... <laughs> It was interesting. It's like, this is the tool set for Windows 8. But guess what? We're not going to say a word right now about Windows 8. We're not going to tell you what we've got coming in this beta for Windows 8 developers. or And right. we're also not going to talk about Blend, our design tool for Windows 8. Uh, we're not going to say anything about that at all. Instead, we're just going to tell you, it's we're going to talk about that more next week when they launch the consumer preview. So then, you know, they'll have their information in sync and not possibly have any leaks uh, but they did talk about how they're going to um, make this next version of Visual Studio a development suite, not just for Windows 8, but also for Windows Azure, so for mm. the cloud. Mm. Um, and they really emphasized a lot on today's uh, webcast that, hey, guys, even if you're not doing these new Metro style Windows 8 apps, we're going to still have stuff in this beta for you. So if you're developing desktop apps, um, if you're developing ASP.NET apps, um, if you're targeting server, you know, don't don't think we're we're forgetting about you because we're not. Well, so that that was my <laughs> take. <laughs> they are forgetting about you. Um, they forget well, about you. <laughs> forget about well, that. They're, they're not really updating that stuff. I mean, it, it, I I got the same. Well, that was one of the two big takeaways I got as well. Was that uh, this is not just for Windows 8; it's for everybody. You know, if you're doing Win Forms or, like Mary Jo said, uh, WPF apps or whatever. Uh, that all still works, and there are some benefits just to the uh, the code environment, the um, IDE, and so forth, that will benefit almost anybody. Um, they're they're targeting some fairly obvious trends around mobility and touch and so forth, and they want this thing to be as applicable to professional programmers, of which they, I think they said there were nine or ten million, something like that, in the world. But also this new crowd of amateur programmers, you know, the guys that have nine to five jobs, but they come home at night, and today they're writing apps for the iPhone and maybe for Android. And they want that they want this thing to be as good for those people as it can be uh, as well. Not just professional programmers, but also these enthusiast programmers. And uh, Microsoft already has Visual Studio Express tools, which are free. Uh, they're I, I don't think this is changing, but they have a, a version that's kind of separate for each language. So there's like a Visual C Sharp Express, there's a Visual Basic Express, you know, Visual Web Developer Express, and so forth. Uh, but they're going to have a, a team. Uh, product that's going to be free and it's like uh, what's the team foundation server express i think is the name of it and for team for very small teams of up to five people you'll be able to get all these team-based features for free now in this version which is actually very interesting uh, but yeah I, the the number one takeaway is uh yeah there's going to be some windows 8 stuff but uh we're not we're not talking about that <laughs> so. and that yeah. concludes this breaking news update <laughs> <laughs> the World Today is produced by Mutual News in New York, utilizing all major wire services, special mutual overseas correspondence, and the news editors of more than 500 affiliated stations.
Listen tomorrow <laughs> well, night. To the or world. some guy in his parents' basement. <laughs> or a <critical>. blogger. <laughs> Watch Ty, all legally yes. valid forms of journalism. Ty, Don't times have changed. differently. <laughs> times have changed just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't resist. That's uh, that's from the the sixties and Mutual Radio News. It sounded like one of those newsreel things. From it the did. 40s. It sounded much older. Nukes from the front, but the Allies <laughs> continued their march across exactly. Europe. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mister Hitler seems to be bent on world domination. <laughs> uh, so this was a big, big story for all of us. Uh, and I, you know, it's funny because we were doing uh, Mac Break Weekly on Tuesday. And uh, I think it was the Daily that said, Flash, according to 500 news services around the world, I, uh, iPad will be welcoming Microsoft Office any day now. And they had I saw pictures. That thing and I thought, I'm not touching this. Thing. No <laughs> that was, well, it's funny because that, I, I put it on my list and I thought, but I'm waiting. Yeah, this I doesn't wasn't look, sure. Doesn't look right to me. But fortunately, Mary Jo Foley understand them. Of course, Microsoft issued a denial within like half an hour. So I did. I did not do the story, but fortunately, Mary Jo Foley has explained all for us. And uh, <laughs> and it is. And you know, this is boy. This this is why it helps to have experts reporting this stuff. So here's the the daily article by Matt Hickey that came out on Tuesday with a picture on an iPad. I enjoy that it's a first gen iPad, by the way. Is it? <laughs> That's funny. I yeah, it's notice. got that old ugly sleeve thing that Apple used yeah. to Oh, yeah. I uh, enjoyed the leopard skin um, in the background there, What is there that? Too. I don't know. It looks like a Chinese phone book. I don't... It's <laughs> stuff that guy has in his bedroom that we are better not... Oh, it's... Better off not knowing too much about. It's from Italy. It says Fragile. So, uh, <laughs> um, Microsoft issued what would, would be not exactly a categorical denial. They... No. What, did, what tell, tell it... So, what, what happened next, Mary Jo? Okay, so here's what happened. So this, these pictures come out. Everyone starts writing, oh, the, you know, Office for the iPad, it's coming out in a matter of days. And so I wrote a post on it, too, and I said, you know, they say it's coming out in a matter of days. I, I can't corroborate that, but okay. And um, next thing you know, Microsoft calls me and says, um, by the way, those screenshots aren't real. And I, I said, what? They're not real. You're kidding. So I tweeted to Peter Ha, who's the editor of The Daily, and I said, Microsoft's saying your screenshots are fake. And so then things took a really interesting turn. So he tweets back to me, they're not fake. And it was a Microsoft guy who demoed this to Whoa. us. Whoa. Whoa. Um, so next thing you know, Microsoft is getting a little defensive. And the next tweet that comes from Microsoft, it was like the whole battle was over Twitter, right? The next tweet from Microsoft <laughs> says, okay, we really respect the daily, but... Um, People who are waiting for something to happen in a matter of weeks are not going to see anything happen. Oh, okay. So they not, didn't that, deny that's not a denial. This. No, and I saw a bunch of people saying they denied that this product exists. Nope, they didn't deny it, and they didn't say that wasn't the product either. All they said was that that was not the, their exact words to me were: "This is not a screenshot of a real Microsoft product." And, and and so it won't that come out mean, in the next that few can weeks. Mean fake. <laughs> right? That could that doesn't mean this does that doesn't mean the product is doesn't exist. It means this could be like a maybe a mock up UI on this right. product, and they took a shot of it. Right? Right. I hope it doesn't look like that. I know. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, that I hope so. <laughs> yeah, too. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what's your sense? It's a, it's a non denial denial. You say your article, "How to Parse a Microsoft Denial," basically says. Uh, a, that some middle manager at Microsoft is in deep doo-doo <laughs> because, you know, presumably somebody from Microsoft demoed this for uh, for Matt. And B, uh, it isn't a denial that it probably is, in fact, going to be out at some point. Well, we, we know Office is coming for the iPad. I mean, that's not... We know that? That's yeah. no longer... That's I'm no sorry, longer I didn't news. know that. I mean, that so that, I now know Yeah, that. no, it's, okay. it's definitely coming. I didn't get the message, so I do know. They've the never said is, that, but we, we is, believe. No, they never... No, no, but we... We, we know. I mean, it is happening. It's just a question of when, you know. Uh, Microsoft conspicuously left out iPad, iOS, or whatever from their list of the 213 different platforms that Office 15 is going to ship on. But, right. um, 
clearly by that point at least we'll have something uh, Although, on the iPad. There's no, there's no, there's no. I could see why they might. I mean, it's hard to turn your back on a platform that's that successful. I mean, that's a potential to sell tens of millions of copies. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I could see why they might not want to because uh, they. I think one of the reasons they yeah. want to do Windows 8 on a tablet on ARM is to stem well, the potential tide of enterprise adoption of the iPad. And, and this so, just encourages enterprise adoption, right? Yeah, but, uh, you know, Microsoft obviously is in this weird spot with their platforms where... They always have. Uh, you almost have to harm one platform to right. help the other one or right. whatever. So uh, it, it's very clear to me that Office on the iPad would be a paid product, whereas Office on uh, uh, at least a WoWA tablet would be free and included with it. And there, there's a benefit there right go. there, there you go. of choosing that platform. Yep. So... Yep. But they can't charge you know, too much. I mean, uh, well, Apple charges uh, ten bucks for its three. Uh, no, but they could still apps. charge. They could also just license it for use uh, for consumer well, use only. Right. Ah. Plus, on the iPad. Real, After all, like, the iPad be, is a toilet. Right. Right. <laughs> right. It's consumer. And, and to be to, to really be exact here, Microsoft hasn't said um, that Office on the ARM tablets for Windows eight are going to be is going to be free. They've said uh, Office will be quote included with the windows tablets and when i said so does that mean pre-installed does it mean free and they said nope you're just what assuming included what means it, it comes with the tablet <laughs> included, that's yeah. what i think but nope they said no we'll include the battery <laughs> but you'll have to pay for it cue, cue yeah. the footage of steve or um, uh, bill gates saying uh, can you tell me what included means yeah. please <laughs> yeah i mean I, it's yeah. interesting that i didn't realize they were such uh, um language parsers uh um, yes but I guess they, I guess this is there's a long standing uh, tradition of this in Redmond. And you know what I what I thought was interesting is so the apps that that the Daily talked about being on the iPad are Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. OneNote's already on the iPad. Right. Microsoft already has right. made that available. So those are the same four apps if you count OneNote as what they're saying is going to be available on Woa, right? So. Right. Um, you know that makes you wonder like what what is this thing? Is it the exact same suite that? They're running some that somehow is like an HTML5 version of Office, um, or what is this thing? Because it's 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 interesting. It's a, the exact same collection of apps to me that is going to be on both tablets. It's very interesting. There's so many conspiracy theories you can. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that uh, if whatever the feature set is of Office Web Apps 15, right, the the coming version that there's an interesting baseline of functionality there that maybe Microsoft would be comfortable giving away for free or for next to nothing on different platforms, right? Obviously on the web, through Office 365 and SharePoint and all that. Um, maybe on new computers, right? WOA devices and so forth. Maybe it won't just be WOA. It would be something you get with a new device. Um, maybe on the iPad too. Maybe these are all kind of the same baseline. Maybe that's the point. You know, that for the full featured version of Office, you basically have to have Windows or maybe the Mac. But if you but these other things are going to be sort of a subset, you know, like a, uh, the most basic functionality and that maybe they're all kind of the same, which I think would make a lot of sense. And Microsoft never really said they wouldn't, they're not doing any of this. So this is all, uh, I mean, it's conjecture, but they never denied it. When a non-denial denial is, a, is, an ex, is, is, a, uh, ex, is an admission in my book. Is it not? Well, you know, I'm you know not a country funny? lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that, sir, I, I is a non-denial denial, which makes that an admission, <laughs> sir. In the state of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> that is legally. <laughs> that, sir, is yeah. a confession, sir. <laughs> no, you know, you know what they do, and this is what I did in my uh, in my post where I said how to parse a Microsoft denial. A lot of times, Microsoft has denied stuff I've had too in a non-denial denial. And what they do is they find one tiny thing that you have wrong, one like really like one word or right, something, yep. and then they tell yep. everyone, "Oh, the post is wrong. You should just not pay attention to it." That word so, is wrong. Are you yeah. suggesting <laughs> that they have a double standard? <laughs> No, am I? <laughs> no, I think that's... Uh, but that's, that's what happens, you know? I, and I think you can blame uh, uh, Pam Edstrom. I think it goes all the way back to the earliest days of, uh, of so Microsoft. You have, no, you have no idea how much I blame on Pat, Pam Edstrom. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, and, uh, and I just, I can, I can kind of remember this is, has been always, a, you know, an interesting... We should tell the listeners who don't know who Pam Edstrom is. Who is, is. Pam Edstrom? 
So anybody who knows about Microsoft knows their main um, PR agency is called Wagner Edstrom. And Pam Edstrom is the Edstrom of Wagner Edstrom. And she was the very first PR person I ever worked with when wow. I wrote my very first Microsoft story interviewing Bill Gates. And, and at that time, she was, in, she was in-house. Wagner of Wagner. She was she was in house <laughs> yeah. at the time. She was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She she was Bill's personal handler. Yeah. And um, if you want a Bill, you have to go to Pam. Yeah, yeah. If you want Bill, you got to go to Pam. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have a title, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> um, let's talk more about uh, since we're uh, in the office space. Mm -hmm. Some more Office mm -hmm. fifteen tidbits mm -hmm. from the outside world. SharePoint. <laughs> Or what? Don't I don't be know. afraid, Theo. <laughs> I am afraid. No, I'm excited. I uh, I couldn't be more excited. I'm just. It's I'm not keeping, you. It's the time zone change. I'm keeping it on the inside. <laughs> yeah. So remember, we talked we talked a couple weeks ago about Microsoft saying that they had sent the Office 15 bits out to a, a small group of select testers. Yes. And so. They're, all those people are under NDA, pretty tight NDAs. And so nothing really has leaked until this week, pretty mm -hmm. much. On, on, uh, yeah, so stuff is starting to leak. Um, I, I have been talking to a guy. Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, embarrassingly. It's Bjorn Furunap. Fur sure. I'm surprised <laughs> you had a problem Who, with that. <laughs> yeah, he, he is a self-described SharePoint-aholic. Um, Not working guy, for Microsoft, though. No, not working for Microsoft. This guy, for fun, takes pages, like thousands of pages of SharePoint documentation and dissects it wow. um, and for fun in his free time. And so he's been really digging through stuff on the Internet, and he's found all these little interesting tidbits that have leaked out about SharePoint 15, which is the next version of SharePoint, part of this whole Office 15 wave. And he, he's been actually, he's very enterprising. He um, has packaged these up into a service that he's selling um, so he's all his sleuthing is wow. available to buy for fourteen ninety five from and you get all Fru Knapp's from him. SharePoint Corner. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh he I he let me look at a couple issues for free and I'll tell you, if if you care about SharePoint, it's worth the fourteen ninety five because he, he really goes into great detail about things like the coming app marketplace in SharePoint, um, how they're going to be adding a new education module. So if you know what Moodle is, um, which oh, is a yeah, open I love source. Moodle. Um, yeah. So Microsoft's going to supposedly take on Moodle with SharePoint. Wow, um, so they're going to be doing that's that huge. That is huge. They'll never actually. take on Moodle. So yes. they're not buying Moodle. It's an open source no. product, but they'll include it as a SharePoint feature. Or not Moodle, but like they're building their own kind of Moodle oh, competitor. They're going to build a Moodle Which, competitor. Oh, yep. Well, there have been some that's, commercial, you know, there was, what was it, Blackboard, I think? There have been some other choices. So that's interesting. Yeah. Moodle yep. is so wonderful. Yeah, a lot of people really love it, and um, so you know they saw. <laughs> Paul, don't laugh. I feel, like, I feel like I just wandered into the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Muppets. It's the Muppets Microsoft podcast. By the no, way, no. Bjorn Bjorn was really excited about you uh, quoting him. I know he, he just was. he wrote a blog post about how excited he <laughs> says I've been foleyed, <laughs> jumping up and down. Uh, <laughs> And he talks about uh, whether he's breaching the NDA, and it's yeah. interesting. That's yeah, good. So, um, yeah, congratulations. And the answer is yes. Uh, yes, I am. No. But but he he's is not. not. He, says he he's is not. not. He's he not under NDA. Yeah. Um, and he's taken a lot of hate for this. But you know, he's he's finding out stuff that a lot of Microsoft customers want to know, and who people who aren't in the inner circle. And I think right. he's doing a service for people because a lot of people are trying to make plans you now bet. for. Are, am I going to upgrade to SharePoint? And right. I need to know what's in it. He so. uh, is the uh, Raphael uh, uh, Rivera of SharePoint, is what he is. He is. He's, he is. Like, huh. he's the Furu Knapp of, sh <laughs> of, of, of SharePoint. How would you pronounce that? I'm sorry. I got to ask Farouk him. Knapp. But... I would say Farouk Knapp. The Bjorn is throwing me because yeah. Bjorn is like, uh, is like uh, Finnish or, or, or Icelandic. But I don't know what Farouk Knapp is. It could be <laughs> Furu Knapp. It could be Japanese. Furu Knapp. It could be, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Farouk Knapp. I'm going to go with Bjorn Farouk Knapp. Okay. We'll hear from him later, I'm sure. <laughs> He's going to jump up and down and say, Leo Laporte has ruined my name. <laughs> but but yeah, so that's, wrote, that's pretty interesting. Way. So that's, that's one piece of the new um, Office 15 stuff that's coming. What did Raphael say? 
He just wrote me to tell me he was changing his name to Farouk Knapp. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael Farouk Knapp. We're all Farouk Knapp now. I'm Farouk Farouk Knapp. <laughs> so SharePoint, uh, SharePoint actually is a really interesting um, uh, technology. Uh, and so SharePoint 2013, what, it, 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 what does it come as part of? It's part of e Exchange. It's part of... Server, so it's, what is it? Yeah. So when, when you think of Office, right, you get Office on the desktop, you know, all the yeah. apps like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, blah, blah, blah. On the servers, you get Exchange, SharePoint, and Link. So those are the back end equivalents of what you get Got on it. the front end. So, and, and Link yep. is the video conferencing. Yep. Share, SharePoint is a way of sharing uh, documents, uh, yep. collaborating, that kind of thing. Indeed. And uh, I, yeah. what? I'm reminded of my second or third. Microsoft event, uh, they talked about clients, whatever the version was at the time, maybe multiple clients, probably 9X and NT. And then uh, the second half of the presentation was about what was then called back office server, which was in the uh, pre-exchange day. So they had a, something called a Microsoft mail server. And um, I fell asleep in, in that <laughs> oh, uh, <come> on. <laughs> presentation. I, just, I, I don't know why I just thought of that. but Because <laughs> you were napping. <laughs> <laughs> SNA server was part of it, remember? Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the version of SQL server they had at the time was based on Sybase. Oh, my God. Wow. Yep. Wow. Back Long to time. the past. Those, yep. Were, uh, yep. those were the days, my friends. But, Sweet. you know, uh, for, for you SharePoint doubters out there, it's it's already a w substantially over billion dollar business wow. for Microsoft. So it's a, it's one of their biggest businesses. So it's, it's a lot of people out fastest, there make a lot of... Um, Sorry, I was just gonna, it's the fastest business to a billion dollars they've ever had. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised. It's, it's actually very, uh, very practical. Although, actually, Office 365 might beat that. Although, SharePoint is, of course. They make more money on. Yeah. <laughs> um, Microsoft Office 15 technical preview. Do, do we kind of cover that? Do we want to talk about that at all? I'm just looking at the I mean, list. There's, here. Yeah, there's also The Verge had some screenshots today yeah. uh, of what they're saying are Office 15 client apps um and there you can't really tell a whole lot from them yet because it, um they're pretty they're pretty you know pretty they're rudimentary pretty. but <laughs> yep. pretty and pretty rudimentary yeah yeah um i like but, this big you know, bar at the bottom that's a big change right there yeah, yeah i think the they're trying the to make it touch, touch friendly yeah you know? yeah clearly yes, yeah definitely yep and it reminds me a little bit of that fake ipad uh, screen that we saw mm-hmm um, well, actually, the the one bit of that fake iPad screen we saw that made sense was that bottom bit bottom because bar, that looks yeah. an awful yeah. lot like a Windows 8 app bar. Right. Uh, and it would be conceivable that they would have common UI elements. So mm -hmm. that, I have to say that was the one part of that that looked, you know, yeah. fairly legitimate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, good good stuff from The Verge here. Yep. Ribbon is yeah, still so there. Stuff's starting to leak. Stuff is beginning to leak. Yeah, most of, the, most of the leak shots, uh, they, you know, they always have the ribbon minimized because, of course, it looks more aesthetic, you know, and clean right. that way. But, but obviously, it's there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's there. Uh, and it's... I've, I've got my, a screenshot of my own uh, coming later Ooh. as a little tease. So. Wow. Screen. <laughs> Wasn't that a, a very famous uh, Virginia Woolf novel, a screenshot of my own? I think that was it. <laughs> uh, it is. It is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very famous. <laughs> uh, uh, Once again, I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Call of duty, Paul. Uh, <clears throat> I'm listening, sir. So Microsoft uh, d uh, joined the dog pile on Google this week. Google got in a lot of trouble over uh, um, bypassing micro uh, Apple's uh, security in the uh, iOS uh, Safari browser. Yeah. And uh, and Microsoft said, hey, you, and they're doing it to Internet Explorer, too. To which Google Google fired back on that one. Google Google uh, uh, rolled over on the iOS one. But when Microsoft said this, <laughs> I just think they're tired of being pig piled Google, on. No. Yeah, Google said no. So I mean, um, Microsoft is so predictable. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it is kind of beautiful. Uh, so it started off by uh, IE blog saying Google is bypassing user privacy settings using this P3P privacy protection feature in mm -hmm. IE. Uh, Google's response was, P3P hasn't worked in, in years, and nobody uses it, and we all bypass it, and it's just a piece of junk. Uh, am I, am, yeah, am I, but, I'm paraphrasing. No, you got it right. You're doing a uh, good job. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's the story? Uh, I, you know, so, it's hard to say. 
Yeah. I, and, you know, one, one thing that I got to say kind of stuck in my craw about this was right before Microsoft puts this blog post out, uh, like a couple days before, they put out a blog post saying, um, wow, Safari's not secure. You should use Internet Explorer because Google's not tra tracking our people. And then, like two days later, they're like, "Yes, they are. They oh, are wait, tracking." Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're <laughs> doing. <laughs> and they made a video. Should I show the video, kids? Oh, sure. It's, it's so painful. It's it's painful. I, Microsoft videos are always excellent, so I, I imagine this one is fantastic. This you're gonna love this video, kids. The guy standing in the uh, lobby. He's, he's doing. Top of his game. He's got a Google tie and a white suit. In Chats online. He's, he's, he's now he's looking to apparently Mr. Google for you in his downtown. <laughs> Google lighting, apparently. Is that a parody of moonlighting? Hello, hello. Google Apperson. That's here for my 430. <laughs> it's 530. Oh, yeah. That's, ready for me then. Yeah, these, Sit down, Mr. So he's supposed to be Bruce Willis and she's supposed to be uh, Sybil Shepard. There's experience in ad sales. Why do you want to work for us? I've been developing a cloud collaboration and product. Yeah, so it doesn't software, shave, apparently. And I'd like you to implement that across your entire company. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you want us to be your lab rats? Pioneers. My employees live on Excel and PowerPoint. Does it work like those? Potentially. Why would they do? How long has it been since Moonlighting has been off the air? Just had a curiosity. Uh, Sometime. 1989 or something. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. You couldn't pick, um, I don't know, 30 Rock? Something a little more modern? Remember uh, the Seinfeld I, I just, ad with Bill Gates. <laughs> oh, I know. I still, I still feel like I'm the only person on earth who enjoyed that ad. but Or those two ads. Uh, I like those. I, those were ads. <laughs> we're light years ahead of of this video, but this now who is this intended? Who who do they show this to? That's on YouTube. Yeah, I sure think it's right. just. What if my employees need to make revisions while they're on the road? Don't worry about it. You ask so many questions. Can they do that? If they have internet, yeah. If they have internet. And you still think this is ready to roll out? How this else are we going to know? So slow. It's like oh my god. It's worse than <laughs> this week in Google. <laughs> I mean the point the point of it the point of it's supposed to be, you know, Google lighting means Google's really an ad company right. and they make apps on the side. They're right? pretending they're like, yeah, they've got a yeah. they've got a credible story in the enterprise, but they don't. They do. That's that's actually a real point. It's a valid point, but I feel uh, like, yeah. oh man, they're really belaboring it. <laughs> Listen, well, I Microsoft is obviously seizing the reins here and, and and they should. I'm not saying this is the right approach, but you know, for them to go after Google as aggressively as they are. I think is both smart and somewhat unexpected. I mean, it's nice to see. Yeah, I, I always enjoy the uh, smarmy depiction of the Google guy. That, you know, and I love it when this up. guy comes in with the fog machine. Yes. <laughs> and apparently, he spilled some wine in his shirt because I. It's very, I don't. It's <laughs> very strange. Oh. <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> 10 years ago, that would have been played by Brian Valentine. <laughs> That's strange. It would have. Wearing a tutu. <laughs> yep. Oh. He's not on your side. Just just remember, yeah. Moonlighting aired, uh, thanks to the chat room, Eric Duckman tells me, Moonlight aired from March 1985 to March 1989. So well, 23 sure. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Bruce Willis expert, so it makes sense that I would know that. You but. did know that. I was impressed. Yeah, you knew the year. <laughs> My God. What happens when the world's largest advertising business tries to sell productivity software on the side? Beware the Google lighting stranger. It is a little strange when you think about them from that perspective. I mean, Google presents itself as a technology company, of course, because it is, and, and kind of a mathematics-driven company like they're scientists, you know, but... I mean, ultimately, they are an advertising business. That's what they. Sure. That's how they make all their money. Well, but you could say that. I mean, Hotmail is ad is an advertising play too. I mean, uh, you could say. Well, but <laughs> right, but any Microsoft website is, is an advertising business. I'm an advertising business, but that doesn't really speak to the full. I mean, it's monetizing itself with advertising, I, but it. But it, in order to get you saying, to see the advertising, they are creating a product that you use. I, I right, think that's no, not your main. No, no, I, no, I think what's actually, your main is, is it a good product or not? That's what's true. No, no. Well, but 
I, I, there's also there's, there really is a central issue here. You know, Microsoft has advertisements in Hotmail, and Google has uh, uh, advertisements in Gmail. But Google only makes money through those advertisements, so they're a little more insidious about how they go after the ads. You know, uh, Hotmail is only a small part of the huge Microsoft empire. I mean, and I think the belief there is that people who like Microsoft software will go to Hotmail simply because it is the Microsoft email offering, you know, and that they don't make money directly from ads primarily. They, it's more of an implicit thing where people stay in their ecosystem. I, and so forth. I mean, I think what it, all it really is is it's different financial models, different business models. One's ad supported, one's not. Do you, yeah. you know, I mean, that's the yeah. difference. I think what you really have to decide is, well, there's two things. The, the software on the merits of the software. And then secondly, and this is to your point, do you trust, do you not trust Google? Who do, because, who do you trust? Yeah. 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 Well, right. Microsoft the video is brings up the, the, I was just going to say, they bring up some of the missing features that Google, Google didn't have offline access for docs for a long time. So that, you know, that's a right. subtle dig in there and all that. So they're trying to make yeah. some points. Yeah. No, those and, points and are, they, are, and they should go after that stuff. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe in a better Maybe if you know, Love Boat might have been a little more. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Steubing, you could do a lot more. I think. I, I, actually, that's an excellent idea, and I bet every guy who was on that show would appear in a Microsoft ad for very for little money. Very little money. <laughs> Go for the whole gang. Julie, I think, is busy. Uh, let's see. Microsoft, more Microsoft versus Google. Microsoft yeah, the last is one is suing the... Motorola. Yeah. And Google for patent abuse in the uh, EU. Right. And that, that that's kind of a breaking news right there. That just happened. And I think is actually kind of a huge milestone. I mean, it's very interesting. It, it, there's a possibility that the European Commission will actually combine this complaint with Apple's very similar and previous right. complaint, uh, which is actually very serious because one of, you know, not coincidentally, just before, uh, just before the EU and the DOJ announced that they were approving this deal uh, for Google to buy Motorola Mobility for, I think, $12.5 billion, Google came out and made a public statement where they said, we are going to license this stuff for reasonable terms. You know? Right. And th th they didn't do that randomly. I think this was a little bit of feedback they had gotten from the EU where they kind of said, oh, yeah, yeah, no, we're definitely going to do that. And what Microsoft is saying is they're already not doing that. <laughs> You know, right. And uh, and Apple made the same exact complaint, you know, that these are um, uh, patents on very basic technologies. That, this is fundamental stuff. They're, they're basically yeah. say that you cannot uh, let people view videos on the Web or connect wirelessly to the Internet without paying right. Motorola for the privilege. Does Microsoft make any products to do that? <laughs> well, Xbox, <laughs> maybe, and PCs. Um, yeah. So Microsoft right. and it's really about brand patents, right? The, the yeah. it's this is about is like you know which how, it, that's um well what does Fran stand for? I always just say Fran. It's like free and reasonable access. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, so um, the so, idea, the, the fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms. The idea yes. being, we we yeah. own the rights to this, but we agree ahead of time that we will license this for fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms. And Microsoft also came out with a public statement where they said. We will do the same. In other words, the, the, we may we may sue you, but we're not going to try to prevent you from selling your product in the market while we do it. Right. You know. In other words, one of the things that Apple is doing is engaged in right now with uh, Samsung primarily, but I think also with Motorola is this attempt to not just sue you for using the technology that we feel we own from patents, but to also prevent you from selling your products in certain countries: Germany, Australia, I think the United States as well, um, which is a completely you know a, a different level of craziness. Uh, and Microsoft, I think, in their Google Lite statement from a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, whenever that was, said that they wouldn't do that. You know that. Um, so this is this is technology. unusual. I think I think this is unprecedented. Uh, this is Microsoft General Counsel uh, writing on TechNet, actually yeah. revealing the prices. Motorola is asking for a one thousand dollar laptop that Microsoft pay a royalty of twenty two dollars and fifty cents for the patents on H.264. And that, those, by the way, that's only 50 of the 2,300 patents that uh, H.264 is covered by. There are 29 other companies involved. Those companies have agreed to friend terms. Microsoft pays two cents per laptop to those companies. So Google or Google Rolla is, is saying, yeah, you pay them two cents, but you pay us 
50 cents. Now, if these these are the facts that Microsoft's general counsel is putting forward, that's that is significant. Yeah, I think this is a pretty compelling argument, although as is always the case, and you could go back to the I, you know, the IE thing that we just talked about. You kind of do need to hear the other side, right? Right for the for the full story, of course. If that's though, and, but that is not a you know, if if two cents is what uh, I, I presume they're talking about MPEG LA when they talk about those other companies. If two cents is the MPEG LA H.264 yeah. patent royalty, asking twenty two dollars and fifty cents on a thousand dollar laptop and forty five dollars on a two thousand yeah. dollar laptop is significant. Yeah, if that's if that's actually what they're demanding. Um, there, there have been two Google responses to this so far. The first one was uh, basically mounted to, and then <laughs> the second one, I think they came out and said, actually, you know, we we are interested in working with Microsoft on this. And I, I think, I think Google is seeing the beginnings of something that could be a very serious uh, counterclaim to their uh, effort to buy Motorola well, Mobility. That this precisely. thing could actually be that serious, precisely, and that uh, maybe this will. Uh, and, that, and, the and as spot. you said, there's a, there might be another side to this. That might be that this lawsuit, as often happens, these lawsuits are just kind of to the, the stick that goes with the carrot, the licensing carrot. Maybe that isn't the price that they're actually going to settle for. And right. uh, But Microsoft sees a, a clearly uh, an opportunity here because Google did imply that they would use FRAN standards for licensing when they wanted to get the EU to approve the Motorola acquisition. EU approved I, the acquisition, and now they go, oh, <laughs> Got you. <laughs> <laughs> I was lying. If that's the case, but we'll, I'm sure Google will respond. Probably didn't happen in that exact order, but that's it's it's it's, it's, it's close that enough. That evil laugh. It's kind of a George Costanza moment. Ha! Gotcha. Gotcha. And meanwhile, this just in. Get like this just in. Uh oh. Yes. Um, Wait a minute. Should Google I has, play the breaking news? Yeah. Play the breaking news. <laughs> okay. <Eat that>. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, Google is replacing uh, the CEO of Motorola Mobility, uh, Sanjay Jha. It's I his believe, fault. With, with Dennis Woodside, who used to run Google ad sales in the Americas. Oh, so oh, dear. Google ad sales guy is oh, dear. the new Motorola Mobility CEO. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's going <laughs> oh, to hurt him. Well, he knows how to it's make money. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to make money. <laughs> I think he was the guy in that moonlighting ad. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I think that's the same guy with him. Might have been. I hope he looks just like him. Just yeah. like him. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all very interesting. You know, it's got what. What it really is is this. It's. It looks almost like the Republican primary campaign, where you have just <laughs> these people at each other's throats. Microsoft and Apple and Google and just fighting, fighting, fighting. I love it. It makes for great press, at least that. At least our shows are interesting, so we thank them for that. When we come back, tips of the week, software of the week, our enterprise pick of the week, get ready for Dynamics CRM Re Release 9, baby. And, woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! and our, <laughs> our code name of the week, I love to tease Mary Jo. But you know what? You know what? People, uh, I get all the time, finally, you're doing some enterprise coverage. So... There you go. There's so a definite. People laugh. People but mock us, but no, <laughs> this is important. Uh, time to talk, speaking of important, about audible.com. We love audible.com, Paul and I. Did you did you load up on books for your ridiculous, what did you, flow, you flew from New York to Madrid yeah. to London to Barcelona? How did that work I got out? A, I got a lengthy email from a guy, and I, I started formulating a response. I decided not to, but I, I'll just give it here. And it basically amounted to, 5,600 words on how you could have gotten to Barcelona faster. And <laughs> I just want to say... It took longer to read the email. <laughs> you know, I mean, do you really think I've never traveled before? I mean, I, I found out about this less than 24 hours before we were leaving. I looked into rental cars and trains and other planes. Yeah. planes. Yeah. I looked into stuff, believe me. I, I'm traveling with small children, you know, yada, yada, yada. So, we, we, you know, we added a couple of, uh, or I should say half a day of travel to our trip. So we did it and it was fine and... It was a family bonding experience, and everyone survived, so yeah, it was fun. there you go. They'll talk about it for years to come. I hope not. Did you, <laughs> did you bring many but books? But I did. I did. I did. Yes? I did. What did you bring? Uh, what did I you listen to? I listened to uh, The Stand, a bit of that. I downloaded that now on your recommendation. I'm so excited. I don't know how I'm ever going to finish it. That's the problem is I don't drive to work every day. I, I need to. It's maybe 57 I, I, hours. It's huge. I know. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, but I talked about that last week, didn't I? I thought uh, 47 hours, pardon me. Yeah, it's yeah. long. Well, no, I'm uh, excited about this because this has not been available before on, uh, right, on audio. Yeah. yeah. 
Yep. And uh, actually, let me look because I don't know if well, I, I added one to the notes, so I don't. You might not have seen it because I added it at the last second. But there is an all-star recording of uh, Dracula that just came out. Ooh, uh, the original Bram Stoker. That's actually a great book, by the way. Um, and it, it's one of those things that it's you know over 100 years old now, but it, it just it still reads really well. It's a great book. Look at the names they've but, got. But the all-star na- the all-stars are not uh, you know like celebrities or actors. Well, or Alan Cumming and Tim Curry are. But then Some of them are, Simon but, Vance and Simon Preble are incredible readers. Catherine Kelvin. They're, they're all the best audible readers. The best readers. Reader. John Lee. Yeah. Oh, my God. These are great people. Um, and um, Tim Curry in particular is one. Uh, I believe he's been in a couple of Stephen King ones. And um, it's just a great, kind of a great uh, crew there. So they're doing a dramatic reading of the book, which sounds very interesting. So I have not actually listened to this yet. I should throw that one out. But this one sounded very, very interesting. And I just have to, you know, and if you haven't read it, by the way, uh, Dracula, the book, is it, it's a fantastic book. It's actually a, just a really good book. Keep talking. I'm posing for a picture right now. <laughs> uh, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this... I'm sorry to interrupt this commercial, but we had to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of, uh, of uh, visitors in studio, and uh, and they have to leave now. So uh, I think once we started talking about Audible, it was it was all over, so... Um, I'll, the, just, I'll add some blasphemy to this and say it, it, the, Dracula is written much like the New Testament. What? As a, <laughs> as a no, it's a it's a series of uh, you know letters and and um, like diary entries and play, so forth. Let me play a little bit of this. I'm just curious. Yeah. I don't you know. Sometimes the excerpts are right from the beginning, which might not get us into yeah. the acting. But let's just see. I, I, I think Count I'm Dracula had directed me to go to the Golden Krona Hotel which I found, to my great delight, to be thoroughly old-fashioned. For, of course, I wanted to see all I could of the ways of the country. Mm. I was evidently expected, for when I got near the door, I faced a cheery-looking elderly woman by in the way, usual... I think that's pe- John Lee, who's uh, one of my favorite Audible uh, narrators. Yeah, probably the... Um, what's it, like Jonathan Harker character, whatever. The, yeah. The lawyer. Show Alan Cumming is in this. Uh, Tim Curry, who is... Uh, many people remember as... Uh, Frank, Dr. Frank and Furter from, yeah. from, from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> uh, wow. This is this is really... Thank you for the suggestion. Yes, another book. I Unfortunately, I have two credits. My credit's renewed today. So I am going to... It's a more reasonable 15 hours and 20 minutes long. Yeah. Well, you know the neat thing about The Stand? I think it was just one credit for 47 hours, which is great. So here's the deal. If you go to audible.com slash windows, you can get... Uh, you'll, you'll be signing up for the gold account, which is a book a month. Um, and that, you know, I think the subscriptions are a very good way to go. You don't have to do that. You could buy a la carte, but, uh, I, I just think subscriptions make it very, um, very, uh, easy to get your, uh, your, 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 your week, your monthly dose. And, uh, the first month's free, which means that first credit is free and uh, the book is yours to keep forever. So do look for a book. Let me just check and see if the stand, I think the stand is one credit. Um, Random House Audio did this, not uh, not Audible, but I think that you know, just fantastic stuff out here. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you are on a plane trip to nowhere, if you are driving to work every day, if you I use I was listening um, on the Stairmaster this morning. That's when I listen. Audible dot com slash Windows. Get your first book free and see if you are Audible material. Now back we come to the show, and in the show we have Paul Thorat. In the red trunks, and in the green, in the, in the green pantsuit, it's Mary Jo Foley. Our pick of the week, Mister T. I could never hit Mary Jo; she'd kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember who's in charge I'm here. Tougher than I look. She's okay? tough. No, I believe that. She's every bit as tough as she looks. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've ever discussed this on the podcast, but there is a a new site called Udacity. Hmm. Which is a, uh, I believe it is. It's well, the site says that it, they are uh, low cost university education. level education. Yeah. So in the in the in the same sense that you could use a service um, like Live Mocha to learn a foreign language, they're offering college level courses. Uh, primarily, it looks like they're all technology based. There's only a couple so far, but there's an introduction to programming uh, languages course that teaches you how to build your own search engine. That's available now. Wow. Uh, there's one or for programming a robotic car, this is and then cool. they have a bunch of uh, other ones coming. You know, operating systems, um, you know, algorithms and data structures and so forth. And 
It looks like they're going to have a fairly extensive collection of uh, classes available over time. So you can um, you have to sign up for the site. And I believe I, I've signed up for the CS101 site, which uh, uh, rather uh, course, which is the um, building the search engine. It's kind of the basic programming class. Um, I believe that one is free. I think over time they're going to start charging for this, but it's going to be a uh, you know obviously much less dramatically expensive than going to college or whatever. But well, and it um, has to be because you've also got iTunes. You but uh, the two professors course, yeah. are from the University of Virginia and Stanford. Is a Google fellow. Uh, this is pretty right. pretty impressive. It's it's really interesting and and it's ongoing now. So it's just gotten started this uh, course and uh, and it will unroll like a college semester does. You know, with new classes each week and so forth. So. Uh, very, very interesting. And uh, if this you're first one's a, a Python class, so that's that's cool. I think that's a great language to start with. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I'll, you know what? I'm going to take this class so I can uh, I can know whether to. You're going to jump in like immediately. I think it, yeah. I think it literally started. Rolling. Start February 20th. Yeah, seven weeks. So I have time. Wow, really cool. Yeah, it's a cool one. I so are you taking up it? For it? Yeah, I I signed up for it, you know, some weeks ago and forgot about it. And then we were on vacation. I got back and I got the email where they said, "Okay, we're starting. <laughs> like, I got to get moving here." So, yeah. Um, yeah, it looks really interesting. So, so it's so Udacity, U D A C I T Y, like University of yep. the City, <laughs> Denmark City. <laughs> U the City. I think it's probably something like Audacity without the A. But anyway, that's the uh, yes. that's how to find it. And uh, I've just signed up. So. I could have sworn that this was started by an ex Stanford professor. I'm um, guessing, since uh, you know, I, I would guess that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Who just wanted to bring education to the world, more, you know, uh, using technology more easily and, and more inexpensively, and so forth. So let me just see the the first uh, the first course content. Now that I've signed up, is here, and I can. Mm -hmm. University Audacity, and this is our very first class with David. David, what is this class all about? So welcome to the first class. This is a class that's going to introduce you to computer science. And we're going to do that by building a search engine. You're not expected to have any previous background in computing to take So this class. first one Find is about uh, an hour and 15 back. minutes, and, and it's a seven-week course. Mm -hmm. I think you're right, Paul. I think this is really interesting. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, They have homework. There's they have. quizzes. Wow, homework. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. You know, it, it can't be too expensive. This one's free, obviously. It can't be too expensive because you've got iTunes U and so forth. But I love the idea of low-cost, quality education available globally to anybody who wants to learn. It's just such a great idea. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's your pick of the week. What about your software of the week, Polly? This one's a little overdue. I have a, a stack of app picks, you know, for various platforms that have been sitting there for a while. But uh, Skype 5.8 probably came out a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember exactly when, but this is the one that adds uh, HD video calling and oh. also uh, much deeper integration with Facebook and that kind of thing. So I use Skype fairly regularly all of a sudden, you know, obviously with the podcast, but also uh, to talk to people. And more often than not these days, if I have a conference call, I'll call in with Skype. Uh, because I find that this, oh, yeah. the, the call quality coming out of the computer speakers is better, and I like to take notes. So instead of wearing a headset, that's right. I can I can much you know have much better control over the volume and so forth. Yeah. So well, we're using Skype right now, and I think the quality yeah. is is excellent. Yep. Is this? Are you using Skype five or whatever it is the new Skype uh, right now? Yes. Ah. Is it I, not supposed to be working? No, no I don't know. <laughs> I, no, no, and I guess we'll. I guess that uh, means we will upgrade because it uh, looks good. No, it looks great. You sound great. I yep. think we should all upgrade, every one of us. Very nice. Uh, and it's free, right? Now, what is, I see this Skype Premium. So that's really yeah, more about I, what you get. That's more like calling plans and stuff like that. My understanding of that stuff, I think if you need to do uh, group calls, I think you need to have a... Right, group video, kind of a no partner advertising, group screen sharing, live chat customer support, 30% off a webcam, but... Everything else yeah. is part of it. So the software is the same. It's just the feature set. Yeah, we actually do group calls at work, but I, I believe that only one person needs to have it for that to work. You know, the person making or you know, arranging the call. So that's something they do in the office. Uh, so it's not something everyone has to have for that. To work. It's cheap. It's, uh, you know, uh, 50, what is it? Uh, four fifty a month for 12 months. So that's, what is it? 50 some bucks a month. That's not bad. Yep. That's not bad. Cool. I'm going to download Plus, now it. It's a, now it's a Microsoft app, so you know it's going to be great. Oh, my God. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It doesn't, you know, it's no, funny. No the, worries there. You would never know. I mean, I don't see, uh, I mean, the, the Skype page looks the same. Is there, a, at the bottom, does it say Microsoft? No, nowhere. Nope. 
It's all it's weird. It's like they're trying to hide it. It's like you would never know. Is that because <laughs> they want to protect it. Link or? I think they want uh, no. Google not to sue them <laughs> to prevent the sale. <laughs> That's really now, I interesting. Think, I think a big part of the reason they bought Skype was because they had a great brand and they don't want to... Why mess with it? Yeah. Mess yep. with it. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So there you go. There's a tip in the pick. That means it's time to turn our, our attention to the Enterprise Pick of the Week and Mary Jo Foley. Yes. So uh, my Enterprise Pick of the Week is a version of CRM coming late this year. So I think I had a previous Pick of the Week um, a couple weeks ago about CRM 8. R8. Um, and that's the version that's going to come in the spring. But they're already starting to talk about R9. And if you know anything about Microsoft CRM history, this is pretty different because it used to be three years between releases for their CRM product. And now wow. it's like two big releases every year with some uh, more minor releases in between. So they're really rolling here. And this is going to be an update to both the on-premises version of CRM and also the cloud version, which is called CRM Online. So it's it's early days still, you know, to be talking about nine, since it's probably like a fall 2012 product. But um, what I think is interesting is they're already talking about how they're going to leverage the cloud better with that version. So they're going to take some of these cloud services they've been building, uh, for example, the thing called social analytics, and they're going to integrate that with their CRM on-prem and online products. So... What, what that would let you do is say say you're trying to track service incidents and say you're you're a company who cares about people complaining on Twitter about you. Right. If you use this add-on, you'll be able to prioritize which tweets need to be addressed the quickest because you'll be able to kind of know the reputation of the people who are complaining. Wow. So if it's just some guy in a in a basement right. running Linux, perhaps you won't really care. But if you but if it's like you know somebody who's a big client of yours. And your, you know, I don't know, GE or something. You you'll be able to tell, like, uh oh, get get to that one quick. Wow. Um, so that's part of this release. And another cloud um, deliverable they're going to be folding in, uh, or possibly may fold in, I should say, because it's still up in the air. Um, is they're talking about um, taking some of the data sets that are on the Azure Marketplace, which there's all kinds of data up there for free and for pay right now. Um, and they're saying if if you're a CRM customer, you'll be able to pull some of that data from these data sets and use it to populate your record. So, you know, if there's a data set with all these kinds of pieces of information you need about a certain kind of customer, you'll be able to use that, populate your data set automatically. And at any time that updates, it'll automatically update your CRM system. So it's kind of cool. Like they're really finally like figuring out how to take some of these cloud things they're building and bring those over into a totally different division of Microsoft and make use of them in a, in a future product. So something to watch for. Very you know, interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And our code name. Oh, uh, okay, yes. And our code name of the week. Okay. Code name of the week is Kitty Hawk. Mm. And I don't know how many uh, listeners will remember this one. This is kind of one from the from the archives. But when Microsoft first, first started talking about Visual Studio Light Switch, um, which is this tool that they've got coming for um, – both line of business developers and cloud developers. The code name was Kitty Hawk way back. This was like three, four years ago, maybe when they first started using the Kitty Hawk code name. And what's interesting to me about Kitty Hawk as their choice of code name for this was um, the guy who does a lot of work on, on their uh, Visual tu Studio Team Foundation server, Brian Harry, he's the head of that product. He lives in North Carolina. Hence, I think that's where the Kitty Hawk Kitty code Hawk, name. of course. They have come from. Yeah. yeah. And the reason I made that the pick um, for Codename this week is we found out today when we heard uh, about the next version of Visual Studio that Microsoft's actually going to fold light switch into Visual Studio 11 professional SKUs and higher. So uh, if you're if you're liking that tool and you're somebody who cares about doing line of business or cloud apps, you should try to buy the SKU that's uh, professional or higher when this comes out because you're going to get light switch as part of that. So cool. There you go. Mary Jo Foley writes about Microsoft on the ZDNet blogs at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Joins us every week when we do Windows Weekly. Thank you, MJ. And Paul Therat is back from Barcelona. You can find him. Did you blog all week at the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com? Yeah. You just I, I mean, it was, well, no vacation it was over for the you. long weekend, so, yeah, I, I did, it, was, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> on the beach. He's a beach blogger. Not in the basement, but on the beach. <laughs> Paul Therat, winsupersite.com. 
com. You also could find his book, uh, Windows Phone Secrets, in the bookstores everywhere. Uh, and we do this show every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC at twit.tv. If you miss the live broadcast, no fear. Just get the download. We've got audio and video available for you in a variety of formats, all of them licensed from Motorola Mobility at uh, $22 a $22 pop. $22 a pop. <laughs> twit.tv and wherever better podcasts are collated and aggregated. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Thursday for Windows Weekly. We'll have something to say, too, next Wednesday. It'll be the day after the... But why uh, is something happening? Something. Something's happening. <laughs> we should have something to talk about. Thank you, guys. Thank you.